Hello and welcome back to another StreamSheets tutorial. Today we're gonna talk about the wind cockpit default example. Like the windmill example, uh, it also works over MQTT, but this time we're gonna listen to the information the windmill example is producing. So make sure the windmill example is running when you are listening or starting the wind cockpit example. I already have opened it and it's already running for quite some time and you can see a lot of stuff is happening. Um, basically on the left side you can see that something changed uh, from the windmill example. You have something called an inbox and I just basically uh, didn't show you the inbox last time because I didn't check the show inbox checkbox right here but this time we want to actually listen to something like a data source and not simulate the data ourselves so the inbox becomes quite handy. Because what can we do here? We can add something called a consumer which we had to specify beforehand and this consumer is listening in our case to a MQTT topic um, and it's the exact same MQTT topic the windmill example is publishing data to. Something else has changed. The calculate stream sheet mode is now on on message arrival instead of, uh, instead of continuously. So now a recalculation of the whole sheet is only happening when a new message arrives in this inbox. And as you can already see a lot of messages are arriving. So what do we see here? It's exactly the information we were sending. We have some speed here, we have the angle and the power. And to connect the inbox with this with the sheet, you can just drag and drop the parameter that you're interested in onto the sheet and it's changing the value with every new information coming into the inbox. Perfect. Now you can do whatever you want with that information. We have we can implement some logics to define further uh, monitoring or we can add some charts or even publish different data depending on what we have been implementing in this sheet. All of this is going to be done within the wind energy cockpit example. Um, we're going to just start with the speed here on the top left. We're listening to the speed and let's say we want to know the average over the last 60 seconds. For this we just need the time aggregate function. It's a new function that we defined and it's very straightforward to use. Point at a cell you want to listen to, define the period of time and define what kind of aggregation method you want. In our case, it's aggregation, uh, aggregation method one because that's our average. So now you have the average over time, over the last 60 seconds actually, uh, always displayed right here. And you can even go one step further because as you can see on the right side, we also have something like a time chart of the wind speed. You can use this time aggregate to dis display exactly this information because not only the average of the last 60 seconds is stored in the cell, but the time aggregate always needs the original data to yeah, calculate the average. So the data is also stored within the cell, you just can't see it. And if you want to display it, just select this as your data source, select a chart, and go ahead and display it. Already done. Perfect. And since the information is not stored uh, solo, but in combination with the timestamp, you now have your timestamp on the bottom and the value on the left side right here. Um, yeah, perfect. So now we got charts. What do we want to do next? I'm not going to go into detail right here. You can have a look for yourself. I want to go into the alerts and actions part. 
Um, we basically decided that there should be different actions depending on the speed of the windmill. And we said, okay, if it's higher than 8, something should happen, and higher than 12, something else should happen. Because if it's going too fast, maybe there could be damage to the windmill, and we wouldn't, like, not want to have that. So, um, first we're going to decide on a color code, and we're going to say, okay, green is below 8, between 8 and 12 it's yellow, and faster than 12 it's going to be red. So if we first look into the speed and say, is it faster than, than 8? No, it's not. Okay, false. Is it faster than 12? No, it's not, so false. If the speed is going to change anytime soon, we're going to see that as soon as it's getting higher than 8 and 12, these two are going to turn into true. This is really cool because then we can define basically some statuses for our uh, different kinds of speeds. And this is what we do right here. We're going to say if this information here is false and it's false here as well, please display green. If not, what is true and what is false, and depending on it, display red and yellow. It's not that fast right now, so maybe <laughs> if we're going to have a little bit of time, uh, we're going to see it going faster, like right now, and maybe it's going to go faster than A. No, it's not. We'll see about that. So, what do we want to do with this information? Two things. First, we want to publish this into an MQTT stream. So we, we're going to say, hmm, something is going too fast, we need to alert somebody. And we are alerting the information that we have on it right now uh, over MQTT again, but not all the time, just when e this or this is true. Because we don't want to send the information all the time when both of those are true, we are going to use something called edge detect. In this case, edge detect only turns to true if the monitored cell turns from false to true. So just a one-time action. To, um, if this happens, we are publishing MQTT to another topic called Power Plant Plants Windmill Alert. So now everybody else knows about this, but we still have this beautiful dashboard right here. Why not display some more information right on it? And we are going to do this in this table right here called like something like the alert history, the last 25 incidents that we have. And how could we do this? It's basically working the exact same as the MQTT publish here. Basically, all the time when the MQTT publish happens, we also add the timestamp speed and alarm of our status to our table right here. We are using something called stack add. Every time this right here is triggered, the status of the timestamp, the speed and the alarm that we are setting in this area right here is displayed or added to the table on the right side. Very easy. So now we have our windmill monitoring, we have the alert history, we have the time chart, and on the bottom we even have something looking like the digital twin of what we have in our windmill example, just a little smaller. We added some more, uh, something more. We added the color coding to the windmill blades. I'm gonna just stop for a second. And as you can see on the left side, the data messages are also stopped. Um, and we added one more thing. We added the parameter fill format and went ahead and referenced it onto B19. So every time the color code changes, also the color of the blade changes. And as you can see, now it's red, 
because the color code is also read within B19. Awesome, right? So that's basically it already. This is just a small example of what you could do for dashboarding. There's more graphs, more charts, and a lot of different um, calculations you could do depending on your use case. So let me know if you are interested in different uh, use cases. And uh, until then, Follow us on YouTube to not miss out on any further videos and see you in the next one. Goodbye.